Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2023. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Psalms 89 through 90 and Romans 14. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. A Mascal of Ethan, the Ezraite, Psalm 89. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known. Through all generations I will declare that your love stands firm forever. That you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. And you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever. And make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens pra praise your wonders, Lord. Your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones for who in the skies above can compare with the lord who in the like who is like the lord among the heavenly beings in the council of the holy ones god is greatly feared he is more awesome than all who surround him who is like you lord god almighty you, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging seas when its waves mount up. You still them. And you crushed Rahab like one of the slain. With your strong arm, you scattered your enemies. The heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south, Tabor and Haran. Sing for joy at your name. Your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong. Your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness, for you are their glory and their strength. And by your favor, you exalt our horn. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King unto the Holy One of Israel. Once you spoke in a vision, you told your faithful people that you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have raised up a young man from among the peoples. I have found David my servant. With my sacred oil, I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the battle uh, the better of him. <clears throat> the wicked will not oppress him, and I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with him, and through my name his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my spouse, and my savior. And I will appoint him to be my firstborn, the most exalted of kings of the earth. And I will maintain my love to him forever, and my covenant with him will never fail.
I will establish his line forever, his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, if they violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands, I will punish their sin with the rod, their inequity with flogging, but I will not take my love from him, nor will I ever betray my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, and I will not lie to David that his line will continue forever and his throne endure before me like the sun. It will be established forever like the man, the faithful witnesses in the sky. But you have rejected, you have spurned, you have been very angry with your anointed one. You have renounced the covenant with your servant and have defiled his crown in the dust and you have broken through his walls through all his walls and reduced his stronghold to ruins all who pass by have plundered him he has become the scorn of his neighbors you have exalted the right hand of his foes you have made all of his enemies rejoice. Indeed, you have turned back the edge of his sword and have not supported him in battle. You have put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth. You have covered him with a mantle of shame. How long, Lord, will you hide your Self forever? How long will you, your wrath burn like fire? Remember how fleeting is my life, <laughs> for what futility you have created all humanity. Who can live and not see death, or who can escape the power of the grave? Lord, where is your former great love, which in your faithfulness you swore to David. Remember, Lord, how your servant has been mocked, how I bear in my heart the truth or the taunts of all the nations, the taunts with which your enemies, Lord, have mocked, with which they have mocked and prayed. Step of your anointed one. Praise be to the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Book 5, Psalms 90 through 100. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Psalm 90. Just remember, we're only going 89 to 90 today, folks. Lord, you have been our dwelling place there throughout all generations before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn people back to dust, the same return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day. That has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You, yet, you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grasses of the morning. In the morning, it springs up new, but by evening, it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our inequities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass away 
under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. With a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. And yet the best of them are but troubles and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your angel, our anger. If only we knew the power of your anger. Anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Bring Lent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. <clears throat> that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen troubles, may your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children, and may the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And that was Romans 89 through 90. And now we will be turning to, I'm sorry, <laughs> that was Psalms 89 through 90. Now we will be turning to Romans 14. Hmm, the weak and the strong. Romans 14. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over dis, dis, double manners, disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge? Someone else's servant. To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand for, for the Lord is, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another term considers another day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own minds. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God, and whoever abstains does so to the Lord, and gives thanks to God. For none of us live for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before Christ's judgment seat. And it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us, us 
stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of brothers or sisters. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are not no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is passing, uh, anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So, whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubt as is condemned, if they eat because their eating is not from faith, and even every and everything that does not come from faith is sin. We'll read that one again. Psalm, uh, Romans 14, 23. But whoever has doubt is condemned. If they eat because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Okay. Well, there you have it. That, uh, concludes Romans 14. And so that concludes by the first go 2023 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Psalms 91 through 93 and Romans 15 1 through 13. Father, I just thank you for your word because if it were not for your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. All right, I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2023 for today. I, Senator Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, God will and I'll be here. Well, we'll be here. And, uh, we hope that you are too. May God bless you and keep you and come back and see us tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, please like and share.